and Exhibit Hall webinar. My name is Daniel Lauren Smith, your moderator for this session. A few notes before we begin. This is a broadcast audio call, so please be sure to turn up the headsets or uh, speakers on your computer. We want your active participation during this call, so we will have some questions and polls, so we hope to hear your responses to that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to plug them into the chat box, and we will save those for our Q&A at the end. This call will be re recorded and available as a digital archive after the session. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our Deputy Director, Rachel Rubin. Thank you, Daniel, and thanks everybody for joining on the call. We're sort of getting the live stream in of who's on, so lots of friendly names there. So we're really excited to have you and uh, to spend this time walking you all through what to expect in the exhibit hall this year uh, to make sure that you, you have everything you need. So I'm going to go through the agenda now. And then uh, we'll get through the slides and we'll make sure to save some time for Q&A at the end. And as you have questions, you can pop them into the box as Daniel said. Also, feel free to, to jot them down and connect with us after and, and we can connect to there. So we're going to spend some time talking about schedule and hours. We're going to talk about the layout of the exhibit hall, the exhibitor kit, what to expect when you arrive, important deadlines, logistics, tips and tricks to make the most out of your booth, We'll review some new recruitment opportunities within the Engagement Center this year, we'll talk about how to register, and then we'll save that time at the end for Q&A. So I'm going to jump right in. So we're going to start with a poll. Uh, and let us know if you've attended Summit before. Daniel, can you start showing us those results? Yeah, so looking at these results, we see that about 70% of you have attended Summit, so good to see so many familiar faces, and about 30% not, so we'll look forward to seeing you there. Okay, great. And what if you've been to the exhibit hall at Summit before? And again, looking at these numbers, we see uh, about the same amount of time. 70% uh, have and about 30% have not, so right along those lines. Great. And at our, at our summit or any, any other organization, have you ever staffed an exhibit hall before? Okay, and here we're seeing a little bit more variation. We're seeing about Fifty-five uh, percent yes, forty-four percent no. So, sort of right okay, down the great. middle there. Oh, thanks, Daniel. So that is uh, that's really useful. So as we talk about staffing and and how to prepare uh, the folks that are going to be at your booth, that will be really useful. All right. So, the schedule and hours. So the uh, exhibit hall load-in and effort. As a reminder for everybody um, that's been to Summit before, our pattern has shifted just slightly this year to accommodate the Jewish holiday at the beginning of the week. So in the past, we've had uh, Leadership Day on Monday and the conference Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And as a reminder, this year Leadership Day is on Tuesday, and the conference is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Tuesday is our load-in. We'll be there all day, uh, ready to help you help you load in, and I'll talk about what to expect when you arrive in a moment. On Wednesday, we open bright and early at 8.30 a.m. That's when it's open to the public. You're going to have access to arrive in there around 7 a.m. Uh, if you'd like to get in early and do some last-minute setup. Uh, if you, again, if you need um, some slight adjustments on any of this, just let us know. We're usually able to accommodate that. So it's open from um, all day on Wednesday. The only time it's closed is during our opening brunch plenary. On Thursday, same thing. It's open from 8 to 5.30 all day uh, with a break in there for our power lunch plenary. And on Friday, we have limited hours from 8 to noon. So starting at about noon, uh, we're going to do load out. So if you'd like to load out on Friday, you can do that between 12 and 4 p.m. There will be uh, optional load out available also on Saturday. If you, if you can't quite get it in, in that afternoon, you can come back on Saturday. And the exhibit hall will be totally secured, um, locked with uh, security guards in between those times. So your, your things there will be safe. So um, this is what the layout looks like uh, right now. So what you'll see is uh, that big red arrow on the far right is letting you know how people are going to enter the exhibit hall. 
circled there in red is registration. So I want to point to that. Uh, for the first time this year we've put registration um, in our info booth inside the exhibit hall to help uh, the space service a hub. We really want to make sure that you all are getting the highest traffic possible uh, and make sure that people are really spending a lot of time there in the exhibit hall. So that's what, um, that's what we were thinking about in putting registration there. So everybody's going to come in there that first day to register and get their badges. And throughout the conferences people uh, need different things or need to talk to uh, someone from the organization. We'll be right there with you. So people enter there and then they can go around through the right or the left. We sort of do um, what we call the IKEA setup uh, to make it so that people sort of have to go all the way through in order to exit out. We really want people to, to make that full circle. There's really not a bad spot in this hall. So um, the spots in the front are great because they're, they're the first things people see, but sometimes those spots in the front uh, can be tough because there's, there's a crowd behind you and so people don't stay and engage as long. They sort of move along, whereas the spots in the back, there's nobody behind. People feel like they can come in and have longer conversations. So all of these, all of these are great spots. Um, the, what you see in the, on the far left um, between booths 35 and 28, that square, with uh, little, little tiny squares inside um, is a workshop room that's going to be inside the exhibit hall. And that's a big glass see-through soundproof room that we're going to be doing really special workshops um, in. So again, to kind of continue to drive that traffic throughout the exhibit hall uh, all week. So the exhibitor kit. Um, we don't have a poll here, but I wish that I could ask you all if you've received this yet. Um, if you have not yet received the exhibitor kit, uh, definitely let, um, let us know after the call. Um, you can, Sam Merston I think is probably in touch with all of you, so you can shoot her an email and let her know. Um, or, or you can contact me also. I think we probably have contact information at the end, but if not, we can do it during the Q&A. Um, so the exhibitor kit will let, give you all the information that we're going over on this call, so all the important deadlines, um, the layout. It's also, um, this is what it looks like when you log into it. Uh, this is another space, so it's going to show you how to do shipping and handling, which I think we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail later on. Um, and it will go into, again, kind of the specific address, when you, when you can have everything delivered, um, what, what the dates are there. The other great thing in the Exhibitor Kit is uh, it's where you can pick out the furniture uh, that you'd like to purchase or rent for your booth. So options are uh, chairs, which is what's featured here, but also tables. You could do the exhibit, um, the exhibit hall in this space is already carpeted, which is fantastic and saves all of us lots of money. But if you wanted an extra pop in your booth and put in a different color carpet or something a little bit nicer, you can do that. So anything you would need to purchase for your booth you can do through the Exhibitor Kit here. So what to expect when you arrive, um, and this help, hopefully will help you inform what you might want to purchase uh, when, um, when you're thinking about what you want to do at the booth. So everybody's going to have pipe and drape. Uh, you all have different size booths depending on your sponsorship agreement. So most of you are in 10 by 10, some of you are in 10 by 20s or 20 by 20s. Um, but in any case, you'll have uh, that higher uh, black pipe and drape and then lower pipe and drape to separate from the next booth. You'll have one table and two chairs and access to electricity. So that's what comes with your booth. So if you want to do anything, kind of, um, anything more than that, you're able to do that through this exhibitor kit here. You don't have to use the GES exhibitor kit. You can bring in your own furniture if you'd like, uh, but, but these are the folks that we're working with. So also when you arrive, there will be a little check-in desk. Uh, it will be very clear right when you walk into the room. Um, and Sam Merston, you see her picture there. It looks like we're <laughs> holding her hostage here. I assure you we're not. Um, so she uh, will greet you and help you find your booth uh, and be able to answer any questions you have and make sure you're all set and you have everything that you need. And her contact information is here. After the um, after this call, you're going to get this uh, deck in um, in a link that we're going to send out. So you'll have all this information there too if you don't want to worry too much about writing everything down. So we're going to take a moment to talk about some important deadlines. So the first one is in red because it has already passed. So on August 9th, uh, we asked you all to email Sam with a confirmation that you're going to be using your exhibit hall booth, and she would have replied to that with the exhibitor kit. If you aren't sure if you did that or you haven't gotten the kit, um, it's not too late, so, so absolutely please uh, still get in touch with her. But we do have a limited number of booths in the hall. So when we don't hear from folks, we, we go ahead and give that booth to somebody else because we assume that they're not going to be using it. Uh, so please, please, please uh, reach out to us if you haven't yet and you're planning on using your booth. 
So Tuesday, September uh, 13th is, our, is the discount deadline date for orders received. And that's not our deadline. That's the deadline from GES, who is the company that does the furniture and the carpet and all of that. So um, we just want to get that on your radar. October 4th um, is a direct delivery to show site uh, that we talked about for load-in. And then um, the 29th is the last day for advanced shipments to arrive at the warehouse without extra fees. Uh, so you, you really want to uh, try and get all of the you know, collateral or anything, um, giveaways, anything you're having shipped to the warehouse by that September 29th deadline so that, um, so that everything is ready for you in your booth when you arrive uh, on October 4th. So this is the address. Again, this is in the Exhibitor Kit, and you're going to get this um, in, a, in a deck uh, after the call. But this is where you're going to ship your, uh, your, your collateral to. Um, you're going to need a booth number. So right now on here, you're going to see booth number blank. So early, very early next week, I would say before, before close of business on Tuesday, you're going to get an email from Sam with your booth number. Uh, and so you'll get to see the map again. You'll get to know exactly where you are in the exhibit hall, and you'll be able to have the address of what you, where you're going to be shipping to uh, for all of your items. And it's really important that that booth number is on there so that we can uh, make sure it's delivered to the right spot when you arrive. Um, this looks like the same information. All right, and move on. All right, so some tips and tip tricks. So we um, we spent some time thinking um, as a as a staff about what some of our favorite booths have been uh, in our exhibit hall and the and why. And the number one thing that everybody had said was that booths that are interactive are always the best. So we think a lot about making your exhibit hall booth feel. Um, Go from, go from being transactional to transformational. So when you, when you go, it's really easy to have someone you know, hand somebody a stress ball or a pen or um, a new you know, lanyard for their keychain um, and walk away and then go to the next booth. And that's where they get their tote bag. And they go to the next booth and they get a brochure. Um, the booths that have the most, are the most memorable and will really help provide um, the, the best ROI for you and your company are booths where you're, you're going in, you're having a conversation, you're having an experience, where there's some interactive component. So we really want to encourage you to, to think beyond uh, the, the giveaway. Another part is thinking about who, who's the right team to be staffing your booth. So if you think about the goal of the booth, is it to do recruitment? Is it uh, to really cement the brand um, as an LGBT-friendly brand? Uh, is it to let people know about a new service you're offering? So when you think about what's the goal, what are, we, what are we really hoping to accomplish with this booth, and then staffing it effectively. So if the goal of the booth is, is recruitment, to consider putting talent acquisition professionals or recruiters at the booth that can really engage and have those conversations. Whereas if the goal is just to let people know about the brand and get people excited about a new product you're, you're, you have or a new service, then you know, promotional people or, or different, different high energy folks that are on your teams. Uh, are, are great people, but to put some thought into staffing it. It's also worth going back and looking at the hours that it's open uh, and thinking about breaks and how many people are staffing the booths and you know, are they going to need to split up at different times. We really want to see those booths full the whole time that the hours are open. It can be a, a sore spot for, for the hall, but, but certainly for the company and the brand uh, to have your booth dark and empty when all the other booths have things going on. So consider um, appropriate staffing uh, throughout the conference. The last is takeaways. Um, so most uh, companies come up with some really fun ideas, uh, but the, it's really great to have something that people can walk away with, uh, and again, to think about a, a creative idea there. Um, this is oh, this is not a takeaway, but earlier I meant to mention this in the interactive part. We don't have any. <laughs> So that personal pitch, we don't have any charging stations right now in our exhibit hall. Uh, and so if you're a company uh, that, that has things like those portable charging stations at um, our companies, or you can rent those, um, is another great way to have people spend some time and hang out in your booth and, and have a little keychain that they're taking away when they charge in their phone. But takeaways in general are, um, are always a lot of fun and hope people stop by and say hello. So this year we've added a recruitment layer to the, the exhibit hall. Uh, and this, this flyer uh, talks about three different ways throughout Summit for your recruitment team to engage. Um, but, but one of them is the, the exhibit hall. So 
It's not a career fair, um, but we know that there are a lot of people that are coming to Summit uh, with, the, with the goal of looking for, for new opportunities. And we know a lot of the companies that are attending Summit or in, in the recruitment center or in the engagement center are looking for recruitment opportunities. So we're encouraging people to think about it that way. One of the things we're doing to add that layer this year is we're offering an exhibit hall only pass to Summit at no cost to an attendee. And we're really pushing that among um, students in Central Florida. So we've reached out to quite a lot of universities there, as well as um, veteran groups and different groups um, like that. So we're reaching out to those LGBT career centers uh, throughout Central Florida to invite folks to come for free this year to the Engagement Center and learn about companies that, um, that care a lot about, um, about recruiting LGBT people. There's some other information in here that, um, again, will, will come at the end of the call that you'll get that I encourage you to think through about um, other ways throughout Summit to engage uh, around recruitment. So registration. Um, people, we ask that everybody that has anything, um, any, any attendance at all anywhere at Summit register through our registration system. It will make their lives a lot easier when they're walking around and on site, um, and it helps us keep track of things really well. So we do ask that you register. Um, each company is allowed 10 exhibit hall only passes, and then it's a $25 fee for every additional pass outside of that. So the way that you'll register is the same way everybody else is registering from your company. They'll go to the um, Summit registration site, and then they're going to choose this option that is circled in red that says exhibit hall only, uh, and that will it's, it will make it so there's, uh, so there's no cost, and then they'll go through the regular registration process. When they get on site, they'll get their badge um, and, and have access to everything they need to have access to. So if you need more space, all of your, your, your booth is probably 10 by 10. Um, the, depending on your sponsorship level, um, you might have an expanded booth. And if you're not sure what it is, it's in your contract. But if you're still not sure what it is, um, you can we can we can chat offline uh, and get your exact booth space. But if you uh, you know spent some time on this call, go back and talk to your team, and you have a really great idea that will help make the the center more dynamic and really um, push your goals further, we have um, we have some opportunity for expansion this year. So if you need more space, uh, let us know. Connect with us, and um, and we can see. Uh, where to take it from there. So this call maybe will not be a full hour, and I'm always happy to give people some time back, um, but we are at the Q&A section. So I'm going to let Daniel start fielding some questions. Great. So we have a few questions in, and we encourage all of you to go ahead, if you have additional questions, to get them in the chat box. So uh, the first question is if we knew the color of the carpet in the exhibit hall. Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, it's a patterned uh, like green flower sort of thing. They do these um, these really patterned carpets uh, that you all are, I'm sure, familiar with in ballrooms because they don't show stains. Um, but what we can do is uh, take a picture, and I can ask Sam to uh, send a picture of the carpet pattern when she sends out that email with the booth numbers, so you can prepare. Great. So the next question, and I believe it pertains to this slide in particular, is that if this is the draped space, is that typically what the 10 by 10 would look like? Yeah, that, is, that, that does look about right to me. And you know, you've been in the exhibit hall too, so you could probably answer that too. I don't, I don't know if that is exactly what a 10 by 10 is, but that looks right to me also. What do you, what do you think? The next, I, I agree with you. And I think the next question sort of leads into that, asking what the standard size of each booth is, and that, that would then be 10 by 10. By 10. So the next question is um, with regard to electricity and whether or not that is included or an additional charge. So I believe that it's included, and I saw that question too, and they maybe have information that I'm missing um, from the exhibitor kit. So we'll, we'll double check that uh, and make sure to include the, the, the final answer to that um, when we send out those booth numbers uh, for everybody. Great. Um, so uh, we, asked, we answered what size the booth is. Oh, how do I sign up people from my company who will be only staffing the booth? So that's, um, that's that registration slide that you see up there right now. Um, so they'll go in and they'll register just, just the same way that, that you registered when you signed up. Um, but instead of clicking that Workplace Summit Pass, um, or instead of using your code, you definitely don't want to have, um, if you have some complimentary codes as part of your sponsorship, you don't want to give those to your exhibit hall folks because they're already free. So um, they'll just choose that exhibit hall only registration, 
for exhibit hall staff only. Uh, pass. Great. Uh, the next question, is there Wi-Fi available? Yes. So um, there will be. If you are using anything um, that feels like standard Wi-Fi things, uh, you're going to be all set. If you're doing something like live streaming video from your booth, please let us know because we might need to bump up your Wi-Fi a little bit. Other than really, other than anything other than live streaming video or asking people to come into your booth and, and do some really large downloads on their phones or computers, you should be all set. Great. This question is, are the passes interchangeable within the firm? They are absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, for a 20 by 20 space, how many tables and chairs do you get? Oh, that's a great question. We'll have to get back to you about that. I think every booth just comes with two chairs and one table, uh, but maybe we double that for 20 by 20. Uh, so I'll we'll have, to, we'll have to look into that. Okay, well, I think we can uh, see Daniel. Can you tell me? Can we see who's asking these questions so I could respond just to that person after the class? Absolutely. We'll we'll have the full okay, download great. of all these questions if there's anything uh, very specific. Um, can we load out on Friday? Yes. So Friday, uh, the exhibit hall is going to close at noon. Uh, I think we put on here that loadout would start right at noon. It will probably start closer to 1230. Uh, we have our gala Friday. So it's going to um, – I don't – let me find the slide with the hours. But um, it's going to end at about 4, I believe. Uh, so you'll have that time on Friday. And then um, – sorry, I'm looking for the slide. Uh, here we are. Um, You'll have that time on Friday, and then there'll be additional time Saturday if, if you're not wrapped up by then. Okay. So the next question: uh, Can we get round tables instead of a long rectangular table? Yeah. So you absolutely can. That is something that you'll need to order through GES. Can we, we can't hang our? Sorry. Can we hang our own banners? or do we need to get folks in the exhibit hall to do so? Is it a union obligation? That's a really good question. Um, we're going to have an answer for that in this wrap-up email about the um, union restrictions, if there are any. Um, I don't believe there are. I think it's um, an electric thing, and that's it. Um, uh, and yes, you absolutely can, um, can bring your own banners. We'll, we'll get back to everybody about banner hanging in unions. Uh, this is a question summit related. Um, where is the um, opening reception and gala dinner being held? So all of the plenaries, so our opening brunch, power lunch, and gala dinner are, are, are all held in the Pacific Hall, which is, um, if you look at the map, is directly next door to the exhibit hall. So on the far right you see registration, and then on the far left uh, you'll see that workshop room. Then there's a um, kind of holding space between that workshop room and another huge hall, and that other huge hall is where the, the plenaries are. So they're, they're very close to the engagement center. Great. Um, a few questions coming in around if there are restrictions with regard to food giveaways. Yes, there are. So food samples um, need to be under three ounces and drink samples. Uh, as long as they're under three ounces, there's no restrictions. If you uh, want to give a larger sample than three ounces away, uh, please reach out to us because we might be able to help you uh, navigate that process with the hotel. So just let us know. If it's under three ounces, you're, you're all set. Great. Um, so the next question is, um, you brought up the fact that a lot of the best booths we consider to be the interactive ones. Uh, if you could highlight some of the, the best interactive booths from previous years. Uh, you know, I'm going to go through the slides, but feel free to chime in too if you'd like. Um, so on this slide, uh, on the top, you, that is the PepsiCo Lounge. Uh, they did, again, I don't have live polling available here, so I don't know how many of you had a chance to, to spend some time there. Um, and this, this shows actually just a small part of it, but they did a really fantastic job of having uh, games in there and, of course, lots of um, food and snacks and different ways for people to engage with their social media. But it was really set up in a way where people 
didn't just just walk through and grab a snack and leave. Most most of the way it was set up was for people to stay and enjoy their snack in the booth, and so they had other things to do there. There was even if there was nothing to do, there just were tables and chairs set up. So lots of lots of uh, summit is about people finding a quiet space or a just not even quiet, but just a space to sit down and network and have that conversation with a colleague that they don't get to see very often. And so even just offering that sort of lounge space in your booth can be an interactive way to, to, to keep people connected. The other booth uh, that you see here is JCPenney did a makeover booth, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, you can see some folks getting haircuts here, and it was, it was pretty hopping uh, all three days last year. Uh, people had a lot of fun. And, you know, we, I try not to show on here uh, companies like with, with that have their cars out where you can go and see the cars, which of course are really engaging, because I realize that everybody doesn't have a car. And so a lot of it can be about thinking just you know, slightly outside of the box of what your company does. It's a little bit harder if you're um, a B2B company than a company that has a really tangible product that consumers are engaging with to think of what might be interactive. And that's really where building out a lounge space uh, comes in or saying, well, we're, we're going to put the chargers in our booth. So everybody's going to want to come in our booth to, to do charging, and that's when we'll talk to them about you know, our agricultural products or you know, something that's a little bit, our recruitment, or, or something a little bit less easy to build something interactive around. Yeah, and I think some of the other successful ones we had on our opening slide was the Mass Mutual Retirement Ball, where people were writing in before I retire, so giving everyone a chance to, to chime in with that. And then I remember as well that uh, McDonald's did that great uh, spin the wheel game, and you got valuable prizes. I got a t-shirt myself from that, so that's always fun. So uh, some more questions are coming in with regard to when um, booth numbers and locations will be received. Yeah, so what you're going to get next week is a booth number that you're going to be able to use for mailing. Uh, so what happens is we, people, we're giving people a little bit more time uh, to lock in their booth. So we wait a minute to do the entire map so that we're not shifting people all the time. So you'll get, um, you, essentially what you'll get is a letter that's going to correspond to what your booth number will be. So you try and make this as complicated as possible for everybody. I hope we're doing a good job. Um, so you'll get a letter. That's where you're going to mail things to. About a week after that, you'll get the letter and number with the actual map of where you're going to be. So you'll, or about Monday of next week, you'll know where, where you can start mailing to for your booth letter, and then um, you'll get your booth number along with the map and, and kind of really specific instructions about where you are in the hall um, by, the, by the end of next week or really early the week after. Great. Um, so the, the next question is about uh, wheelchair accessibility. Great question. So um, for folks with any accessibility questions, um, I think that we would be better taking those offline um, so I can respond one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, not, I'm not totally sure about every space. I know that the space in general is wheelchair accessible, um, but I, I don't know if, if that pertains to how to make their booth, the advice we have about how to make your booth wheelchair accessible, or is the whole exhibit hall uh, wheelchair accessible, and the whole exhibit hall is wheelchair accessible. Um, but we can follow up maybe one on one uh, on that. Okay. Um, do individuals or, or companies need to let Sam know in advance what type of giveaways they're planning to use? No. If you um, want to shoot a few ideas, uh, we have some sense of what lots of companies are doing. So if you said we're really interested in doing um, badge lanyards, um, we'd be able to say maybe. That sounds great. As a heads up, four other companies are doing the same thing. But it, we certainly do. You don't. You don't need to run anything by us. Great. And the next question has to do with um, with Summit again, uh, and asking how to register um, for Summit and for workshops. Great. So I'm going to try and find that slide again. Here it is. Uh, so this is what part of the registration page looks like. So when you have an exhibit hall only registration, you're not going to be able to attend workshops. So, um, or plenaries, or really anything else outside of going to the exhibit hall, unless you've already connected with me or your sponsor contact to arrange, a, to, to create some kind of other arrangement. Uh, but, but for the most part, our exhibitors are only in the exhibit hall, so they're not registering for any workshops at all. Um, if you're interested in attending Summit, then you would pick one of those other options uh, and register for the Summit. And, and Summit registration includes workshops, and folks don't need to register for individual workshops. You can. Uh, can go to whatever looks like a great session for you uh, in the moment. 
Okay, and our last question is, how many folks can fit comfortably into a 10 by 10 booth? That's a good question. I don't know if that person means standing up or <laughs> sitting right. down. Like, because you want to booth like where you all go into a um, a phone booth and take a picture. <laughs> um, but I bet, I bet that's not what they mean. So maybe we'll follow up directly with them and um, and connect. See if yeah, we can I think I've seen it. I've seen about four, so I think it makes sense. But and let me just check if there's anything else. I think that we are good. Fantastic. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, it looks like this took about a half hour, which is uh, good for everyone, I think. Um, if you need anything after this, please give us a call. If you haven't yet confirmed your booth, please do that uh, as soon as you can. Uh, and Sam will send this link out so you can share it with anybody else on your team uh, and uh, your booth information so that you can start planning effectively. And if you had a specific question that we said we'd follow up offline with you about, we will. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, and thanks, Daniel, for moderating. Great. Again, thank you everyone for joining us on this call. There will be a brief survey at the end, and um, your feedback is important to us, so please take a moment to fill that out. And please save the date for September 8th at noon Pacific for our Out and Equal 2016 Workplace Summit Know Before You Go Live webinar. We hope to see all of you on that call, and we look forward to seeing you in October at the summit.